Hello, this video is on uh, the anesthesia section of the CPT codebook. I am using a 2014 American Medical Association CPT codebook. You can use an earlier version, but you may want to uh, pause the video so that you can find the page where your anesthesia guidelines uh, start. Your page numbers, if you're using a previous version, won't most likely match up to the page numbers I will be calling out. So the anesthesia guidelines are on page 52. Right. And I'm not going to speak to them, I'm not going to read them to you word for word, but I'm going to um, talk about them in layman's terms. The time reporting uh, is right in here, where it explains to you that the anesthesia begins when the anesthesiologist begins to prepare the patient for the induction of the anesthesia, and it ends when she is no longer personally in attendance taking care of that patient any longer. When you're coding for anesthesia, you need to know if you're coding for the anesthesiologist or if you're coding for the physician. If you're coding for the anesthesiologist, then you are looking for codes that begin with a zero. The, all the anesthesia codes begin with zero. And all anesthesia codes must, absolutely must, have one of these physical status modifiers appended to them that are on page 53 here. Okay, if you are coding for the surgeon, then you are not looking for any anesthesia code at all. You're looking for the correct surgery code that identifies the surgery that he performed, and you are pending modifier 47 to that. In your guidelines on the lower left hand corner of page 52, it explains that to you. So when you sit for the national exam and you're taking a multiple choice question, you want to be able to rule out answers as quickly as possible. So in the anesthesia section, if you're coding for the anesthesiologist, you are looking for answers that have codes that only begin with zero. If they have a surgery code in them, you can rule that out as a wrong answer. And not only do they have to begin with zero, but they have a P modifier on them. So if they begin with zero, if they're anesthesia codes and they don't have a P modifier, then you can rule them out as wrong answers. If you're coding for the surgeon, it's in reverse. You're not looking for any anesthesia code at all. You're looking for a surgery code with modifier 47. Anything else would be incorrect. So the physical status modifiers. P1 is a normal healthy patient. P2 is a patient with a mild systemic disease, so that could be uh, asthma that's well controlled. P3 is a patient with severe systemic disease, so asthma that's uh, not well controlled, uh, diabetes that's uncontrolled. P4, a patient with a severe systemic disease that is a constant threat to life. Malignant hypertension is a, a good example of that. Malignant hypertension is a constant threat to life. If you don't bring that down within six weeks, it has devastating consequences to your organs and to your life. P5 is a moribund patient who's not expected to survive without the operation. So without the operation, they would die. With the operation, they have a chance at life. But most likely, uh, the situation that they're in, there is um, a low survival rate. And P6 is a declared brain-dead patient. Um, so this is a cadaver who donated their organs. Now, your qualifying circumstances, unlike the P modifiers, you won't always have one. You would use these only if the situation occurs. So 99100 is for extreme age. So any patient who's under one years old or older than 70, you would add this on. 99116 is the anesthesia complicated by the utilization of total body hypothermia. So they bring the body temperature down. 99135 is the anesthesia complicated by utilization of controlled hypertension. So they're um, slowing the blood pressure down. And 99140 is uh, anesthesia complicated by emergency conditions. Down here in the parentheses, it explains an emergency is defined as existing when delay in treatment of the patient would lead to significant increase in the threat of the life or body pop. Uh, an emergency C-section would fall into this category where you would uh, add this on. Let's look at the codes that are um, in the section. Before I uh, go any further, there's something called the um, anesthesia payment calculation. You'll notice that I have some notes written here, and they have to do with the anesthesia payment calculation. I won't cover that in this video. I'll have a separate video for that. There is a handout that I use. It's not in the book, but you will need to, for the national exams, you will need to understand the calculation. So I will have that posted up on the course site with the um, handouts so that you can use them in conjunction with the video. 
The anesthesia sections are broken out by anatomical site. On page 54, we have the head, the neck, the thoracic chest wall and shoulder girdle. Page 55, we have uh, interthoracic and we have the spine and spinal cord. Page 56, we have the upper and lower abdomen. Page 57, the perineum, the upper leg except the knee, the pelvis except the hip. Page 58, we have the knee and popliteal area. The lower leg below the knee includes the ankle and the foot, the shoulder and the axilla. Page 59, we have the upper arm and elbow, the forearm, wrist, and the head. And then, after that, it's no longer broken up by anatomical site. From here on in, it's broken up by the type of procedure. So these are your radiological procedures, burn excisions and debridement, obstetric, and other procedures. Uh, in a few minutes, I'm going to talk about uh, three or four of the obstetric codes. I won't be talking about every code in this section but I will talk about um, three or four particular codes that um, create havoc in this section because it's not very clear and I need to point them out to you. The first two would be 00300 in the neck area on page 54 and 00400, uh, the thoracic wall uh, and shoulder girdle. 00300 is anesthesia for all procedures of the integumentary system, so that's your skin. The muscles and the nerves of the head, neck, and posterior trunk. So this is where it gets a little tricky. Posterior trunk. So um, your back, your butt, example of your posterior trunk. The integumentary sec uh, system of your posterior trunk. But you're in the neck section. If you try to look for an anatomical site for the posterior trunk for your buttocks, for example, you wouldn't see one in here. So it would be a little bit time consuming during the exam for you to look for that because it doesn't exist. So you need to make a note somewhere in your book where you would look, where it would jump off the page to you that for the posterior trunk, the integumentary system, you are looking in the next section at 00300. Maybe you want to write it. I, in my book, I wrote it near the spine and spinal cord because that's the back area. In the thoracic chest wall and shoulder girdle, we got 00400. And that's the anesthesia for procedures on the integumentary system, on the extremities, your arms and your legs, right? And your anterior trunk. So that would be your front abdomen uh, and your perineum. Now this one's even a little more confusing because if you were having surgery on your arms and legs, your integumentary system on the skin of your arms and legs, you might find yourself looking. Here's up a leg on page 57. You may find yourself looking in there. Well, it's not going to be there. So I wrote a note to myself for the integumentary system. It's 00400. You may look in the knee or the lower leg or the upper arm. Right? So again, I make notes to myself that it's, if it's the integumentary system of these areas, 00400. The perineum, the integumentary system for the perineum. Well, we do have a perineum section, but you're not going to find the integumentary system in here. So I made the note again, integumentary, 00400. And the anterior trunk, right? Your upper abdomen and your lower abdomen. That's your anterior trunk. You wouldn't find the integumentary system in here. You'd be choosing one of these codes that you would be making it fit, but it would be a wrong code. So I wrote the note to myself, again, that it would be 00400 on both of these. So I would suggest that you make some notes in your book so that you could find your way to those correct codes. Now the obstetric section. We have a couple of codes that um, you need to learn when you should use them. They're similar but different. So we have 01960, that's anesthesia for vaginal delivery, and 01961, that's the anesthesia for a, ces a cesarean delivery. And then in the upper right-hand corner, we have 01967 and 01968, add-on code, and 01969, add-on code. I'm on page 60. 01967 is Naraxo labor for a planned vaginal delivery. So this is someone who uh, during her pregnancy has identified that she wants to um, have anesthesia. She wants to have some kind of anesthesia 
uh, throughout her delivery. She doesn't want to have a natural delivery. So they would have a plan of anesthesia for her. And there's a lot of factors that go into that. Um, any condition she has, the weight that she's at, the size that she's at, because she's going to be uh, on this and she needs to be awake so she can push uh, through the whole delivery. So 01967 would be for that. If at any time they decide she needs a C-section for whatever reason, then they would administer something else. And now you would be using 01967 and 01968. And the 01968 is what explains that then it progressed into have a, a C-section anesthesia. And then 01969 takes a step further, anesthesia for a cesarean hysterectomy following neuraxial labor anesthesia. So started out vaginal delivery, progressed into have a C-section, and had to have a hysterectomy. You would use all three of them. Back to these over here, 01960, vaginal delivery only. This would be someone who did not have a planned vaginal delivery in place, an anesthesia plan in place. Maybe it's someone who went wanted to go naturally and then the pain became too much. So they're going to give her um, a shot of a pain killing anesthesia. Uh, they last only a certain amount of time, uh, most likely not the whole delivery. So it's, um, it's not something that's on a drip that's continuous. It's like a, a, a one shot. And um, when it wears off, it wears off. And I'm not so sure if they'd give you a second shot or not. 01961, anesthesia for a cesarean delivery only. So this is someone who's having a cesarean section, not after already trying to deliver vaginally. Right from the get-go, they're having a cesarean section. Right? Uh, it could be their first baby and they're having a cesarean section. It could be subsequent babies um, after a previous cesarean section. So they uh, give them the shot. Again, it's just um, a one-time deal. They give them the pain medication. And uh, cesarean sections don't take long. They do the surgery. They would deliver the baby. And then they're done with that. So those of you um, who are in my classroom, I or on my online class, you can uh, feel free to email me or ask me questions about the anesthesia section in class. I hope you found this helpful, and thank you for watching.